Hi YouTube. Good morning, coffee. So why do I make the kind of videos that I make? Why do I cover the topic of becoming happy? Where are all the unhappy people? Unfortunately, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons why people become unhappy. It could be situational, temporary, or chronic. Um, we find ourselves in trajectories and situations in life and as people that we didn't intend. And that's where mindfulness comes in. It's a dawning awareness and awakening that this is not what I wanted it to be. I am not what I wanted it to be and the ability to consciously choose your own direction. And when dealing with crisis, and trauma and grieving and losses um, of people, of jobs, of homes, of learning to be in control allows you to cope with these things better and to let go better, to move on, to move through better. I made another video like this, but I couldn't post it, so we'll see if I post this one. Uh, for me, having bipolar happiness doesn't always come naturally. I tend to be a person, even in my normal phases, who thinks too much. I think, I don't even, okay, hopefully it stays on the tracks, there are people in this world who wake up for weeks to months at a time and the first thought that crosses their mind when they wake up in the morning is my eyes are open. <sighs> my eyes are open, I have to get through this day until I can go back to sleep. If they even get out of bed. I go through that for periods of depression. I spend so much time reasoning with myself. The things that you believe to be true, that you feel to be true as a normal person, your first instinct, your first perception, that, that passing phase of woe and crisis that you have to work yourself through using your intellect, the self-talk to get you through. Um, when you have an illness, You wake up day in and day out for a period of time with no capacity to see before or after naturally. You wake up with something called anhedonia. Anhedonia is the lack of capacity to feel pleasure from anything. 
um, you literally cannot derive pleasure in your life. So everyone has these periods where they have to make themselves do things that are good for them because they know they're good for them. They have to make themselves make the right choices and not give in to what their feelings dictate. For me, I can go for months doing all the right things and feeling nothing. Deriving nothing. It's all a conscious effort. There are times when it feels like acting. When it feels unnatural. When it feels unauthentic. But your higher self, the one that chooses these things, is you. No one is coming from outside. This is not a therapist. This is not your parents. This is not your support network that is reasoning with yourself to do those things that are correct for you, to act happy, behave happy, believe happy, to talk to yourself and talk yourself into acting as if, because when you are not ill and you reflect backward, so much time has been taken up. And if you give in to the illness and you do not reason with yourself, this is my situation, I do not reason with myself and make myself do things, make myself be behave in relationships as I do not necessarily feel, because I may not feel anything. Sorrow, loss, lack of energy, depression, <laughs> hardcore depression. I have to act at the antithesis. I have to act in the ways that I know sometime later down the line I would look back and be glad I, I acted, that I didn't lose track of any progress I gained during a, a neutral or a positive period, that I don't have things that I regret. I can think in ways that scare me, that scare me down the line. If I went according to my mindset, I can reflect on periods of time that my capacity to not just do nothing, but to do something that would have been to my great detriment to relieve the emotional state um, to believe that uh, there is no pleasure to be had anymore. To believe that to be true. Uh, to believe all the things that my mind was telling me. To believe that I didn't love my partner anymore. To believe that I didn't love life anymore. And this goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. Learning to control yourself, to act as if, to behave and to be happy, to act appropriately. As if, in the immediacy, when you're not actually happy, if you can do the right things for you, if you can do the best you can do to be happy by choosing, by having this two-way discussion with yourself, it's almost as if you are two different people. In the worst of times, when you are not actually happy, when you 
are actually happy, you will be so happy when it comes naturally to you, when you find joy again in, in life and in things and the grieving has passed, the trauma has passed, the crisis has passed, the bad day has passed for the average person. You will be glad that you did not react to your partner, to your friends. You did not withdraw. You did not stop exercising. You did not stop your goals and your projects. You did not call into your job. You did not, you did not behave in a way that when this passes, you will regret. It takes so much effort. It takes so much effort to live consciously, live well when you're deriving no satisfaction from it. It's like eating when you have the flu. But you do those things because you know you should, because you have acquired a higher level of self-control and control of yourself is easy when it's easy. Life is easy when it's easy. Relationships are easy when they're easy. Things aren't easy all the time. For me, quite often, I experience these depressive episodes and I have to live by intellectualizing what is appropriate for me in the long term as if I were caring for an individual with the flu. I have to make myself exist, make myself exist for weeks to months at a time. And because I experience mania, what I equate to the sensation of joy is far more than joy. Far more than joy. It's mania. <laughs> and so when I am normal, normal sometimes feels like nothing. The difference between pure joy and happy or okay. And that expectation because of the level that I have been able to achieve when I am ill in the other way, every day-to-day -day things, my relationship, may feel stagnant or stale. A walk in the woods, an average day may feel very boring. It may feel very static. It may feel like I don't enjoy my life. I don't enjoy my friendships. I don't enjoy my hobbies because I'm not filled with the mental illness drug that is mania. Average happy may feel like nothing. And I have to talk to myself in my neutral phases and realize that what I feel when it is extreme is extreme that normal human feelings are happy. This is happy. This is peace. This is contentment. This is love. That is what this is. The other is an artificial chemical. And I do have the capacity when I am normal to experience tr true, pure joy. I just have lived in a world with so much 
difference. So many shades, so so much overwhelming negativity and sedation and anhedonia to the part where you feel like you're not even alive anymore. You question whether you are already past. <laughs> it becomes you so. And a level of elation, it's as if someone gave you a drug. Um, everything is, you know, you look at a leaf on the ground, it's the most amazing thing you've ever seen and you're overcome to tears. <laughs> and then normal feels less than. So I have to have this running conversation with myself to exist. To exist within this mind, in this life, the best possible at all times, knowing that I especially cannot trust my own emotions. I cannot trust my own immediate perceptions, even the long-running ones. I have to look with a higher self, a higher understanding of the long-term implications, the long-term overview of who I am, what I want, what I love, what is consistent, in the core, regardless of a passing feeling, just like a normal person, regardless of a passing feeling, mine may be longer and a bit more extreme, but regardless of those things, what is factual and consistent in my being? And in the long term, what do I want and not allow any one thing to dictate? So, it is my job, it is my personal job to wake up every morning and live my best life, live my happiest life every day and be my best self that I define that to be and that I know that to be. And it's important for everyone to do that and everyone has passing emotions and things in their life that, that cause us to react and cause us to be blinded and the social constructs and all of that and, and we have to make right choices for ourselves. But for me with my condition, I have to parent myself therapize myself, higher self myself. I have to intellectualize, I have to employ these things that I discuss as a running dialogue with myself every day so that I may be grounded in reality versus reacting to an illness. And then when I am at my best, not up here, not down here, just me. I look back and I appreciate all that I've done and all the things that I do, all the ways that I choose to be, all the things that I choose to keep up, all the people I keep and I keep even with, all of these things that I put in place, these discussions I have with myself. I am grateful. I am so grateful for the work that I put in. When you live with bipolar, you have to acquire a higher self. You don't, you don't have to but you will des destroy relationships, destroy your progress, things will constantly be all over the place and you won't 
You won't know who you are, what you want. Your life won't keep moving seamlessly and smoothly and completely as it could be, the best that it could be, if you don't develop a higher self with which to dialogue with yourself at any given stage of the illness. You're in there and your life is a total object. That is why I do these videos. This subject matter. I don't know if it helps others, but living this duality is what helps me. Consciousness, mindfulness, and dictating yourself above and beyond. If you can be happy, act and do as much and as best as possible, when things are their worst, it becomes natural to reason with yourself and to stay centered. And when things are centered and things are well, you thrive, you thrive, because you've lost nothing. You've gained everything, and if you can stay cool and relatively okay, when things are bad, when they're good, they and you are really, really good. Love you guys. Still haven't got out of the woods. Bye, YouTube.